Welcome to our Fly in the Nest Expeditions right here in Japan. That's close to Christmas. Well, I was saying you're simply trying to get in there. <laughs> if you guys know. <laughs> Hey everybody, we just got back from an incredible 10 days exploring Japan. If you guys have been following for a while, you will know Japan is one of our favorite countries. We've been so many times in all types of seasons and we run expeditions and I feel like the number one place that all of you kept asking us to hold them was Japan because you all know how much we love it. We've always wanted to share this amazing country with you guys. So we just came back for an amazing expedition, 24 people traveling through Japan for Seven days? It kind of turned into 10 days though. Kind of turned into 10 days in the end of Everyone it Everyone kept extending and coming early, which was amazing. And uh, we need to tell you guys about it because- We survived the typhoon. <laughs> we- uh, Shinkansen's got canceled. It was just a very memorable trip in Japan. How you guys doing in the rain there? And we're gonna be announcing our 2024 expeditions very soon. So make sure you're on our little email list, which is in the description below. So you guys can be the first to find out. Speaking of this, super quick, definitely be on an email list um, because right now there are actually a couple of spots available. Some people unfortunately had to pull out of our India expedition at the end of November. If you wanna come on a once in a lifetime trip, come see the Taj Mahal, go through the streets of Delhi, see the pink city of Jaipur, go check it out because there's only just a couple of spots that have come up last minute. So go check those out and make sure you're on the email list because they are always the first people to find out. All right. Let's head back to the vlog. So the expedition kicked off in Tokyo, one of our favorite cities in the world. And instead of going into the heart of the city straight away, we thought we'd kick things off by going to a shrine. Right, at the shrine. Oh, I got one. And we will just pre-warn you guys, we were dealing with some very intense weather at the moment. It was like 39 degrees with 90% humidity and a typhoon was coming. Yeah, so we will have sunshine, then we would have rain. <laughs> a lot of rain. And this group was just so amazing because their spirits were so high. And even though it was raining, uh, we all decided to go to Mario Kart. Started to go go karting. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Dressed up as what? A Pikachu minion. Oh, you remembered? Yeah, a Pik minion, I called it. <laughs> That's just Tokyo for you. Do one of the best things you can do in Tokyo. Let's go go karting. And just like that, off the circuit, straight onto the main road. doing in the rain there. Another thing we love about Japan is the food. So we had to kick things off with a street food tour and this was so unique. All right, so we're starting off at a bar. We've tried two different types of sake. Cheers. Uh, uh, kanpai. Oh, kanpai. Yeah, kanpai. 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 Like I remember sitting in the restaurant. We actually didn't know what they were going to be serving us. And they just put this plate down in front of us and I thought they'd given us a cow. Wow. Yeah, it looked like the rib of a cow, and we were like, oh, what is this? But it was tuna. Oh, my God. And it was the freshest fish I think I've ever had. I hope this is how I'm meant to do it. There we go. Good, yeah. And of course, then we all had to uh, down some, what was it? Wasabi salt sake shots. Just think tequila, but it's wasabi salt, and it's sake. This is the wasabi salt. I'll do it twice. Okay, so bottoms up, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, like wasabi aftertaste. I don't even know how to explain that. Wow. Ready, set. Oh, salty! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we've never done this before. We went to our second stop and we come almost like, it's like a door we opened. I wouldn't even know how to explain to see it. And it's like a little alleyway. We've got little bars here, little restaurants. Look at this. Wow, it's like almost opened up from this like little drawer and there's an entire 
food court alleyway. This is so cool. I would say we would be the only tourists here. It's just locals here, like, look at this. So I honestly thought we were doing a food tour with everyone, but it seems to have just turned into a pub crawl. We've got our second drink. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Let's try it. We've got like a lemon sour or something. Uh, I don't know how strong this is, but you could down many of these without feeling anything. <laughs> okay, some actual food has come out. I have to zoom in for you, but the entire thing is seafood, and we're meant to dip it into a sauce. That's really good. Yes, yeah, so it's like a seafood, almost deep fried seafood. One, two, three. <laughs> so our next day in Tokyo, we went and explored Sensoji Temple. The pagoda, it's absolutely stunning with the striking red tiles. It just looks so beautiful. You have to check it out if you are heading to Tokyo. <laughs> All right, chicken, let's go. Hunter, <laughs> what do you see? We've come out to Sensoji Shrine here in Tokyo. It's a beautiful spot, probably one of the top places to come and see when you come to Tokyo. Having to walk around, there are so many shops to pick up little trinkets and things, and yeah. Rose and strawberries. Strawberries. Very hard. It's pretty hard. And of course, we headed up the Sky Tower Tree to get a beautiful view of the city. You guys had some sushi trains. Oh, it was good. And we then ate way too much sushi. The next night uh, was one of my favorite nights of the trip. We did karaoke. <laughs> And I think this is a good time to mention our guide. We ended up calling her Mama because she was basically the mum of the group. She was amazing. And she went above and beyond for us. Like when we wanted to do karaoke, that wasn't even part of the itinerary. We just said, Mama, do you know a good spot for karaoke? She said, no, a good spot, I'll take you. She took us to karaoke for three hours. She organized us all you can drink and all you can eat. And she sat there and clapped for us for three hours straight. Oh yeah, and she was telling us, like she was handing the mic if you weren't singing. Yeah, she said, she if we didn't it. sing, we had to leave. <laughs> so we love you, Mama. As you guys know, we love heading out to Japan and every single trip we go and try and expand on the few phrases, sentences and words that we have learnt of the local Japanese language. And this is all possible thanks to today's sponsor, Rosetta Stone, where we can now take our language learning to the next level. So we'll be honest, when we all think about learning a second language, you probably have flashbacks back to school, back in a classroom where you're sitting in a desk, worksheets, the old projectors on. But thankfully, it is no longer like that. Rosetta Stone makes learning a new language fun and immersive. There are just so many different ways of immersing you in the language from matching sentences to pictures and real life situations where you would use it. You can actually listen to an audio from a native speaker having a conversation using sentences that you would actually use during your travels. So you can easily jump in here, pick which language you want to learn. So I'm going to scroll down, select Japanese, and then you can pick a goal. So you can click view goals, Let's jump into travel, only 10 minutes for each one. So call lesson 1.1 Konnichiwa 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 They're pretty average there. Plus they don't just have Japanese, they have Chinese, they have Indonesian, they have French and the great thing is there's no monthly fee so you can pick it up today, you can pick it up next week next year for your next trip, you can come back and learn whenever you want. Plus, if you wanted to sign up today, you can use our exclusive discount code linked in the description below. That's gonna give you 50% off lifetime access, like one and done, you pay, and if you think it's just for one language, no, it's for all the languages on Rosetta Stone. So 50% off, use the link in the description below and start learning a new language today. Also in Tokyo, uh, one of our favorite things to do, uh, especially since having kids, is going and learning how to make the local cuisine. So we actually went to a different one this time. We went to a kawaii sushi making class. Our main goal was to make sushi that look cute. Yeah, kawaii means cute in Japanese. Ready and rolly, 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 rolly. And they turned out, they turned out cute. So pretty, man. I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Janet, you need to roll the ball. <laughs> I didn't want to complicate my life. <laughs> so you made like a flower one. Kawaii flower sushi. And like a little square one. Yeah. I think this is the cutest sushi I think I've ever made. Look at this. Hunter, look at mommy sushi. Like it? It's... Kawaii! It was the 
first time Hunter ever tried, what was it, like round cheese? So far, Hunter, has it been yummy? Have you been eating all the ingredients? Is up? Yeah. Uh-oh. So the next day, we had planned to jump on the Shinkansen and head to Kyoto, and everything was going well. We had news that the typhoon was moving on, so we got to the station, and then we just saw... As a result, JR Kyushu Railway Company has stopped the operation of its Shinkansen bullet train. Everyone's sitting around the station, like I've never seen Tokyo Station that busy before. And we found out that all the Shinkansens had been cancelled because there was this one region in Tokyo where it must have been hit with the hard rains, cancelled every single bullet train for the entire day. So we didn't know what we were going to do. Another thing is that so we didn't all have our luggage on the bullet train we had sent it off in a bus and it was heading to Kyoto and by the time we got to the station found out that the bullet train was cancelled our luggage was basically already in Kyoto so we had to spend an entire night with no luggage luckily the 7-eleven had our uh, little packets of undies for everyone and uh, we you thought, get everything at the 7-eleven you get everything at the 7-eleven but as a group we were like okay what are we gonna do now you know what we did we went to Disney yeah. which Hunter absolutely loved because we went to Disney Sea which has the little mermaid Maid section, and of course, we were just recently there before Mongolia, and she was just having the time of her life. Ice cream! Ice cream! Showing everybody her favorite roller coasters. And I what was fun as well was that because we had our entire group there, we took up the entire roller coaster, which was so I've never done that before. Are we ready? Like the entire cart was all of us screaming. Let's go! While Hunter was loving life. So then the next day, the weather subsided enough for us to catch a bus from Tokyo to Kyoto. On the way, our mama was doing so good to keep everyone entertained. We were doing origami classes, and it was so funny because mama was saying, we won't make an origami crane. Uh, that's a little bit too complicated for you guys. We'll make a little box. So we were kind of at the back of the bus with a few of the expeditioners, and... Uh, we decided to uh, do a little prank on mama. And so everyone in the bus was making a box, but we were secretly in the back watching a YouTube tutorial on how to make a crane. And then we surprised mama with our crane. Her reaction it was, was so best. cute. <laughs> and then uh, we finally arrived in Kyoto, and of course, we wanted to stay at a traditional onsen hotel, uh, which was amazing. Everybody was, so, was so happy to be there. Our room was so nice. You're in Kyoto, we had to take everyone to our favorite place, Fushimi Inari. Last time we were there, I was pregnant with Hunter. And now we've come back and we have two babies. We got our favorite photo ever of Hunter and Koa there. So cute. He's a booga! A peekaboo! It was so nice just to walk around. As you guys know with us, we love waking up for sunrise, especially if it is a pretty popular place because you just get to really enjoy it without the crowds. And it was nice because I asked the group, if anyone wants to come early, we're going to be down in the lobby at around 6.30. The whole tour showed up. We got the most epic group photo with everybody. So Kyoto is actually one of our favorite cities because it's a bit smaller than Osaka and uh, Tokyo. Plus it's a lot more traditional. So we went and saw a beautiful Shogun residence. There was a Zen garden. We just all relaxed. It was nice just to take a moment to just kind of enjoy the area. The great thing about travel looking at historical sites is that for so many people of the time couldn't come in here and now we of course are very thankful that we live in a time where we can just explore these exquisite palaces. Before we went and took everyone to do sake tasting. I just realized. Oh yeah we all we, I forgot about that. was a lot that. of drinking on this expedition. We went to a sake brewery museum. Brewery? I don't know how to say that word. And they showed us how they make the sake. It was actually really interesting and then I turn around and basically everyone in the tour is buying sake. I'm pretty sure someone went and bought all five flavors. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because in Australia, I think you can take maybe... I think you can bring five liters back and everyone just stocked up. It was a really good spot. Especially the Americans because they're like, this conversion rate... Yes! I, like, cl they cleaned the sake brewery out. Like, I think so, their shelves were empty. So we feel like we all jumped on the bus like clinking our bags of sake and then we headed to Osaka. I feel like Osaka is my favorite city in Japan. 
Like if you haven't been, that one needs to add to your list. Yeah, it's like this mixture of, you still get those uh, like electric city, kind of like first impressions that you think of Japan with the giant billboards and everything, but it's also still very traditional. Mm. You have Osaka Castle, you have a lot of shrines. It's like a good mix. Good mix. And the city's around water. So the water all goes through the city, which I think makes it really nice. And also, I don't know, it cooled the place down too, because again, we were there in quite a hot time of year. Plus, uh, the street food there is so excellent. Good. So we had to go take everyone to get some takoyaki balls. I was gonna see if Hunter still loved it, if she'd face out of it. No, nope. she is still absolutely in love with it. Yeah, them. I think last time we were there, she was two, and she was obsessed with the takoyaki. She is <laughs> smashing that down. Nom, nom. And this time, just as obsessed. Yes, you can get the takoyaki. Stealing everyone's takoyaki. Oh, <laughs> this one here. The octopus is, is ready. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And we got a takoyaki. Oh, the little, let me get a little octopus head. I feel like this sums up Osaka because I walked around the streets wearing this and no one batted an eyelid. They were just like, oh yeah, that's right. So. Let me go, look at that. He's looking at a silly octopus. Wait a minute, is that you? Oh, what's that? I want to be silly. Oh, he's smiling at her. <laughs> This is why we had to come home. This is why we had to come home. Because we have things like this that's making up room in our suitcase. And it's cute. But then we, yes, that Osaka was where we ended our tour. And of course that night we had to end it with trying a bunch of food. I think little dude's ready to try some food. We had economiyaki, we had tempura, which I've never tried before, tempura avocado. Tuck in. And then the next day, a bunch of people were still around. So we decided to take them all to Universal Studios. Had to start it with a theme park and end it with a theme park, and it was just such an amazing way to just end it all. Alrighty, everybody, let's go! We all had so much fun on the roller coasters. We got cooled down on the splash coasters. They had a really good parade on. I've never been to a parade where they have Pikachu and stuff. Yeah, they have Pikachu, awesome. Mario, all that. There's like big Mario things going on. Pizza, like... Man just knows how to do it. Yeah, Disney and Universal Studios, I feel like are some of my favorite, the ones in Japan. So we just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody that came out on our expedition. It honestly is the best thing in the world that you guys take, you know, time out of your holidays to come and travel the world with us. It really means so much. Like, thank you to everybody that came. And I feel like every time we end an expedition, we always end it with so many amazing friends now around the world. Yeah, Amazing. Definitely. So can't wait to see you all again. Yeah, hope to see you all very soon. Soon, and if you want to come travel with us, go check out the link below because we are going to announce our 2024 expeditions like soon. Soon. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and we'll see you all soon.